name is Neil Sethi. I'm the founder and um, CEO of uh, Glimpse. We're up here in Redwood City. This is not about Glimpse. This is about the patient. We're going to talk about patients, patient, and uh, maybe a little the art of the possible. And towards that, I'll be using some screens from our company slide deck, but it's really not about Glimpse. So we're going to talk about three things today. Patients, plural, a patient, and having patients, because in healthcare you must have that. We'll start with patients, plural. And um, we'll go back to storytelling. You know, we humans, we're um, programmed to be storytellers. We move from the cave walls to computing today. We blog, we tweet, we sing songs, we share selfies in the social space. People do this all day long. These are examples of uh, sites where we're sharing our social profiles. Here's a, another one with my economic profile. It's my credit report. It's not all the gory details, pardon the pun. It's a glimpse into my financial profile. And this is a glimpse into my health profile. Isn't it amazing? Yes, I know the slide is empty. Is this the best that we can do in 2015? Um, this is a great start. I'm glad we're getting there. It's for physicians, it's for a licensed professional, it's not for me. <clears throat> Thankfully, the government, the ONC, Office of the National Coordinator, has a 10-year plan, a 10-year plan for interoperability. I think this is asking the wrong question. There's no business case for interoperability any more than there's a business case for Walmart sharing their CRM data with Target. It doesn't make a lot of sense. This makes a little bit more sense. I'm not sure we're seeing the death of the term interoperability, but if we redefine it, which I'll do in a couple of slides later, if we redefine interoperability to another term, maybe we can solve it, because this isn't going to get it done. And people are talking about one record, a record, a health profile on me that I can do certain things with. Our president and co-founders in the audience, Karthik, raise your hand, please. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and 90% of Americans are willing to gather their information and share their information, share it with the physician, but also share it with chronic, chronically ill peers. I am sure this is what Susanna had in mind, peer-to-peer -peer healthcare. Before we were digitized, before we were automated, we were certainly working with each other. I took care of you, you took care of me, the doctor made house calls. This is where we need to go. But we've been hoodwinked. HIPAA swindled us. The P in HIPAA once really stood for portability. Now, it's preventative. Um, oh look, I put the word swindled, Irrational and Trump all on the same slide. But that's a different conversation. <clears throat> um, turns out that HIPAA doesn't cover me. I'm the patient, I'm not a licensed professional. I can grab my information and walk it across here and share it. I can put it up on a billboard or a site, savemylife.com, there is no HIPAA violation. What about this don't we get? Patients are important for patient-centric or patient-mediated sharing. The lines on, in gray are what's covered by HIPAA, but look at the lines with black. These are connections that I can make between myself and my data. So <clears throat> consumers do solve the twin problems of healthcare. They solve the regulatory, they're not under HIPAA, they can get their information, and they also help solve lower cost and better outcome. It's a physics problem, but what if we took and we folded one over the other, and the patient becomes the wormhole that carries this data? I think we can do that, and Dr. Zeus agrees with me, a doctor at a medical conference. So let's talk about a single patient fairly quickly. Um, this is a patient of ours, young girl, metastatic breast cancer, diagnosed earlier this year. Um, she's going to be seen by lots of folks. She's actually at UCSF as we speak. She texted me earlier. 
Those people are collecting data that they cannot share because they're under the draconian umbrella of HIPAA. But you know who's not under HIPAA? Yes, the patient is not under HIPAA. They can collect their information and they can share it. Imagine if we required interoperability between all of these facilities. It's, it's a practically challenging problem. But the patient, wherever she's been, can collect her data and share it. Wherever she's been is a large number of visits this year. So she's left this breadcrumb trail in the sand where her health data currency is in many places. So we need a model for that. This is real currency, this is mint. So the model is, suppose we used mint, just as a working metaphor, you find your bank, you connect your bank to mint, and mint collects your data all into one place. Imagine you find your hospital, Stanford, I have a record here. My online portal has standard username and login, and I collect it. Okay, but I've underlined the word records, because unlike banking information, records are not computable data. Records are crude oil, and you need to send it through some sort of processing refinery, and it's about as complicated as traditional oil. You need to get the data, because this is a real screenshot, and you don't need to read it. The first column is facilities which use Cerner, McKesson, Epic, and all that. The second column with the red box is lymphocyte, but it's always different from the different facilities. And they have different units, and they measure them differently. We need to standardize it. This is technically possible. It's an actual screenshot. You don't need to read it. You can just see that everything has been standardized. So we turn the stuff from the left onto the... We turn it into the stuff on the right. We need a working model for how a glimpse into a person's work history could be transferred into a glimpse for their actual health history. We zoom in, and the important thing is this. You can actually see a list of facilities and a list of dates, Epic, Cerner. It was all in made interoperable through the patient. This thing can be done. We don't have to do interoperability at this level. We can do it through the patient. So it turns out that portals are a springboard to solve interoperability, but we've got to redefine it. Portability. Bring your own data, at least for chronic care for certain things. You know, I checked with Dr. E. He said portability will solve interoperability. So we've got to have patience. <clears throat> if we can do what we're suggesting in this talk that we can do, what could we do with that data? Well, we're all storytellers, we're part of a community. We can donate the data to this community. Maybe this community. And you can see the curve goes up and down. My BMI is not that good, so that's certainly not my curve. Big data is the buzzword, the statistics. It really talks about this stuff. ACGT, yes. But is that all? Are we going to get any place by just having the genomic information? Don't we need the equivalent in the phenotype? The meds, labs, diagnosis procedures? We put these two together, now we're cooking with curry. <clears throat> but this is my last and f my most favorite. favorite. <coughs> DYD, donate your data. If it can't help me, let me donate so it can help someone else. This is a um, noted journalist who passed uh, kind of young in her life, uh, breast cancer, earlier this year. So is she right? Are we all N of 1 clinical trials? And if we could participate, if I could take my migraine history, which I know better than most neurologists, left side, unilateral, no nausea, no aura, and if I could participate in the community, imagine what sort of advances we could make. Donate my data takes, takes on, donate currency, donate data takes on a whole different value proposition. We've seen this a lot. This is uh, off my Facebook feed. Um, donate. You can donate to specific institutions. We have good friends at Cancer Commons. They're right at the top. You can pick where you want to donate or you can browse. 
like Kickstarter, this is Indiegogo, nearing the end of the slide set. And what if you could take campaigns that ask for cash and move them to a facility of campaigns that ask for data? You can't see this, but at the bottom, AACR is asking for donation of, in this case, claims, but donation of data. This is that patient, her real data. You can see the outliers, and I want to point out two cancer antigens, very much higher, real data, but the trend line is in the right direction. This is also her active medications. All of this was auto-ingested. I am uh, actually a caregiver for that individual, and um, so I have proxy access into that health profile. That happens to be my uh, little sister who was diagnosed. She's doing amazing. I'm not going to let this cancer take her. But she chose to share it with someone she trusts. You can just see in the glint in her eye that she's going to help and donate that information to a lot of cancer research. This is the uh, team that put this um, package together. I want to do a shout out and thank you for all you guys. And um, we're not out of stealth yet, but I'll just say if you'd like to try something like this, there's an invite code very specific to this group. It's good for one week. Glimpse has two eyes. I thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sir. We are cooking with curry. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yes, yummy. Well, excellent. Um, so we had a couple questions. Uh, you obviously, um, in developing this kind of application, have come across a lot of themes in terms of what kinds of information patients and their caretakers want to access. So if you were to put in a hierarchy what information they want, um, can you list the top three? Sure. Um, I'll do it from a patient's side. I walk in, I see my physician. What drugs are you on? Any labs that have been taken? So those are the first two because they're very binary and they're very numerical and healthcare is becoming more numerical. They want to know what the previous guy said. So as you collect your breadcrumb trail, I think meds, labs, diagnosis from previous visits and procedures, in fact, those four things, I give you three plus one. So that's our, um, that's our observation. Okay. Uh, any questions from the audience, please uh, come up to the microphone. Yes. And if you do ask, just uh, announce where you are coming from and who you are. Another question that came up was, uh, in terms of the application, do you try to focus primarily just on the patient or do you actually have the ability to share or take care of your entire family's uh, information? So we build it for the patient and our three rules are sort of tenants. The patient then decides who they want to share it with, what they want to share, and how long they want to share. So think about our use of Dropbox. It's a file and you get to decide how you want to share it around. So the patient has proxy access. My little sister, as I, my story weaved, uh, gave me access, and I'm able to monitor her and to see when something hits her glimpse in this case, I get notification, because she's a little freaked out these days, as you can imagine. So I'm able to see the moment something hits her uh, health profile, because she shared it with me. Okay. Yeah. We seem to have some questions. I, uh, uh, Stephen, I mean, I'm actually a uh, fascinating concept. There's a couple of questions I have for you. One is, did you have to interface with Stanford, UCSF, the local universities first to understand how they structured their data so that you know how to import it? And secondly, is this, I just got the impression of listening to you now that it's automated. Somehow stuff gets into your little sister's profile without her physically inputting it or somehow taking it to you, so how does that happen? So let me address your two questions in sequence. Did we have to interface, and is it automated or some manual intervention? Um, no and yes. Uh, so in detail, it, um, we didn't have to interface, so we didn't have to have any CIOs involved because the cell cycle 
is so long, as we know in healthcare. Um, we didn't have to have any vendor APIs, because that is also very difficult. And um, the patient has access, just like you and I do, to our patient portals. So much like Mint for Healthcare, if you tell your, your health profile once, these are my places where I've been, which we have automated, then from that day on, the polling is automated. There's no CIO, there's no vendor, there's no HIPAA concern. My sister, to your point, actually shared her profile from California to an integrative oncologist in um, Arizona who said, you're getting the best treatment and you know Stanford UCSF is in your backyard and by the way, I wish all my patients could share information. The second part of your question um, was, does the patient have to do anything? The answer is no, unless they want to. We can get all the gettable data. And if we can do it, then lots of folks can do it. We've built a machine that can go much like Google scours web servers and brings in um, information. So that's how we do it. It's all machine. Thank you. Thank you. And we have another we, question? There is one more, but we're actually out of time right now. Okay. Um, probably head back, and if we have time towards that, maybe we could take more questions. I'll be around the rest of the day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your attention.